Okay, how did you and Nitty get that close? Because I know I know you just told us how you met him, but it seemed like y'all had a special bond. Well, well no. <laughs> all right. So here's the deal. When I met Nitty, I met Nitty through Chino Dollar. Right? Mm -hmm. And I went and rap for Nitty. He was like, yeah, you all right. And you know, I'm looking at this motherfucker like, I'm all right. Nigga, who tell you you just all right <laughs> to your face? I'm looking at him. I'm like, he entitled to his opinion. So him saying I'm all right, he gave me some beats. He's like, he all right. I'm like, all right. So at that point, I was like, he don't, he don't really fuck with what I got going. He ain't rocking with my sauce, so it's cool. And um, so we went to a meeting with ASCAP with Ian Burke. And um, I saw Nitty. I like, boy, what's up? I like, hey, hold on, let me give you something. I'm gonna give you this CD. I said, look, I don't want nothing from you. I ain't asking you for shit. I just want you to give me your honest opinion about this. I said, this my little sus right here, all right? I said, listen to this shit. Just tell me what you think. Here go my number shit. He like, yeah, well, what Chino? I said, Chino doing his thing. We good. I said, me and Chino, we rocking. We still good. He like, all right, I listen to it. So I go back inside, but nobody saw me make this move because I went to the car for something. I, I didn't go to the car because I didn't even know Nitty was there. When I saw him, I handed the CD. When I go back inside the meeting, uh, rest, in, rest in peace, Carolyn Miller. She was in there. That's who set the meeting up. Miss B, I was in there. And Ian Burke picks up the phone. He's like, oh. He looking around the room and shit. So I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck going on? You know what I'm saying? Cause he was looking concerned. <laughs> like, get these niggas out of my office. So I was like, so he hung the phone. He said, who's Jock? So he said, who's Jock? All these people, his assistant, people that's in there with me, everybody looked at me. And I was like, he was like, oh, all right. Nitty said he love it. So I was like, oh shit. Word? Yeah, so he was like, oh shit. So they was like, who is Nitty? Cause they trying to figure out who did I talk to? How is this man on the phone? Cause nobody, they thought I went to the restroom. Mm -hmm, but I went mm -hmm. to the car, and that's how I saw Nitty outside. Nitty was never even in the building. So then they like, well, when the fuck did you talk to somebody? So that's basically how me and Nitty got looped back in outside of Chino, you know what I'm saying, with the Miss B shit. And it kind of created a situation because Nitty already had this group of guys that I fucked with. They were called the Slit Boys from the east side, and I really thought these niggas was going to blow. So J Nitty had a deal with J.D., and these niggas have been riding with Nitty. They they rapping mm -hmm. all they rapping like a motherfucker on Nitty beats. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm hearing that shit, I like, but this nigga got a squad of niggas can rap. You know what I'm saying? So I never forget when we decided to get down with Nitty. Nitty was like, "Nah, I'm gonna redo her record." And I didn't know that's what the case was. I thought he was just gonna get on board with us and produce some beats. But a cat out of Memphis, this dope ass producer named Matt Rod, who was with Carolyn Miller, rest in peace. He did the original beat to bottle action. I mm. hit that bitch with a bottle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. So when Nitty started talking about, yeah, I want to remix it, it created tension for me because everybody was like, who the fuck you done trying to hook us up with? He trying to push our nigga out the way so he could do the beat. I'm like, yo, I just made the play. I ain't know he was doing all that. So I never forget, we do the beat, we do the shit over, and that shit catch fire instantly. All is just going. So the Slick Boys, was feeling some kind of way because then who the fuck is this new little bitch Miss B coming out the blue with this nigga Jock? <laughs> like, what? So now they like, it's one slide open to get this deal with, with So So Def. And they like, nah, this bitch not finna take our deal. So when she got the deal, Nita was definitely happy with me. Like, nigga, yeah, woo, 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 I'm gonna do this shit. I'm like, cool. And so it was interesting because the way it played out, Slick Boys, they started beefing with Nitty. Cause they felt like, nigga, you just gonna leave us out here for this little bitch. You know what I'm saying? And that's how they felt. Them nigga was dead for real. Them nigga was talking about killing Nitty. Like, them nigga was dead ass for real. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Damn. Nitty got down. Them nigga was putting pressure. They was applying pressure so hard that Nitty moved out his motherfucking studio. Yo, he got that real, child? Yeah, he got Yeah, because them niggas some real. Them niggas some street niggas. Yeah, hey, yeah. We ain't talking about no nigga playing street. I mean, he was some real. He was some real street niggas, like, on some, like, like. Nigga stomach touching their back. Nigga hustling however they can get it. Nigga, if I got to sell this, sell that, nigga, I sell you. It was these type of niggas. So, <laughs> and Nitty, just think, these his niggas. So if they wasn't a real threat, Nitty wouldn't have moved. Because he, exactly. he just vacated from out of his spot. So when he vacated out of his spot, we got Miss B shit. That shit was going. You know what I'm saying? But it had to st start slowing down at that time. It was, it was going, but it didn't just like super explode. But we was traveling and whatnot. So Nitty ended up getting with Chino and, and setting up his studio in Chino basement, right? 
I never forget this shit. So, Nitty didn't, they didn't ever give me my percentage on that record, Bottle Lash. They didn't give me my publishing, my writer's credit, none of that shit. And it was fucked up because I was like, damn, hold up. But I was like, it's just one song. I know I got, I got plenty more in me that I could, we, we gonna win on. So I ain't wanna, I ain't wanna stir the pot. I ain't wanna ruffle no feathers. So I just kinda, you know how a young nigga kinda just fall back like, all right, I'm gonna I'm play this shit cool. So I never forget Nitty making a beat in, in, in the basement, in Chino spot. I went up. He got frustrated because he kept getting these threats. So he just like, fuck it, I'm finna leave, man. He wanna go. So Chino like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Don't, don't erase that beat. Let me get that beat. I'm gonna get the job. So when Chino got that beat, it was, <laughs> it was a beat that I had a concept for myself and Miss B. And I gave Nitty the concept. He took the he took the concept to Gucci, and then it became a Gucci and Matt Breezy record. Shawty got her ass on her on her. I'm gonna uh, put my hands on her. Oh, you know remember that shit? Yeah, uh. my shit was. Let, uh, just know I had the same goddamn melody, the same. Yeah, I, I said, I left my baby mama at the house. How? Tonight I'm going wild out, wild out. I'm a silk gray goose and pop Chris, pop Chris. I don't care, nigga. She don't run shit. Hey, I left my baby daddy at the house. At the house. So, me B called me one day. I'm like, hey, boy, you finna be mad as fuck. I said, what? She said, boy, that nigga needed a gay Gucci your song. I said, what you talking about? She said, boy, she done gay, boy that nigga gay Gucci your song. And it's a motherfucking hit. I said, for he said, he ain't called you? I said, nah, she like, Phew. but you gonna be ready to shoot that nigga. I was like, for real? So now I'm having this moment of, of you know the moments you always heard about them nightmare stories for artists? It's like, man, this nigga done got me. Y'all already didn't get me publishing on this song, and this nigga done gave my song to a nigga? So I never forget nah, going. This is that welcome to the music welcome industry. Welcome to the this music industry. 4080. Foo Foo 101. So I walk in the studio, he like, hey, but you heard, you, you, you heard the record I got Gucci? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, nah. He was like, that nigga hit. That boy rolled. I'm like, let me hit. Soon as he played, I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm finna shoot this nigga, dog. Like on on, on gut, on my mama, dog. I, I, I like, I, I started like clicking, but I had to control that shit because I like, you can't be emotional. Like I ain't want to feel like no bitch and be bitching out about it. But then I also didn't want to be played like I was no bitch either. So when he looked at me, he like, what wrong, dog? I was like. I would breathe, he said, what you think about it, you good? I was like, yo, he like, what you think about it? I said, I think that's my song, nigga. That's my melody, that's my, that's my everything. It's the concept, me and Miss B. Instead, you gave it to Gucci and Matt Breezy. And he was like, how your song went? I just walked out the studio. I just had to walk out the studio. So at that point, he knew he had crossed me. He knew I was upset. He knew Chino was upset about it. Cause Chino the one who got there and told nigga to say the beat. You feel mm -hmm, me? Mm -hmm. So now I'm sitting like, man, this nigga done gave him a song. Like, what the fuck? Even if, even if, if even with even when Gucci see this, even if Gucci remember, I don't know, but you know how a producer could come in there and say, I, mean, I think you should put a girl on this. He might, he might Gucci may have never heard my words. He may have never heard the, uh, the original melody from me. But if Nitty as a producer say, you know son, da 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 You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So Gucci may be looking like when he hit it, he might be like, what, what? But this the fucking truth.